to be under tremendous amount of pressure from the members of the same public yes, yeah, you're right. to share money out. To share the money. No, it's, coming it's a big challenge. Yeah. Those of us who decided to change the path of working in the manner we did, we have our own sharp challenges. The challenges are politicians who keep crying and shouting. We don't want roads, we don't want schools. <laughs> it's not the money is not building schools. It's not schools we needed. What we need is money in their pockets and put in their stomach. But you see, you, in, in Nigeria, we must learn to address and understand the fact that building institutions that will endure is better than building individuals. When you build individuals only, you are standing the logic of the social development upside down. The individual is here. It's only him that you are developing and growing. And the institutions are down. But if you reverse it and develop institutions, it will meander down and go to individuals. Yes, but individual will only retain what is individually his own. The public will not benefit from, from the problems. So when we started, uh, we were very clear on our budgeting system. We were very clear of the income we are generating, we are receiving, both locally. I started with about 2.8 billion naira or got about per month from federation account. And about 130 million naira only from IGR. And by the time we are done now, looking back eight years down the line, the income you know, fluctuates between four to five billion naira in a month with the IG era of not more than one billion. Yes. And this amount of money we get, we first of all make sure that all ongoing projects that are made on ground in 2007 were completed. I question over about 50 billion naira. International airport, we just started when I came in, I completed that. And the construction of 200, 165 bed uh, child mechanic was going, I completed that. The construction of about seven road projects were going on, I completed that. I did not start a single project until I finish every project I had on because it's a continuous process, nevertheless. And, and uh, when I finished that within 18 months, as I was completing those projects, I had, I was planning what I wanted to do for my state. And I don't award a contract to anybody, even to buy a simple thing of 10,000 naira without having money to pay for it. I must have the 10,000 naira before I award the contract. And when I award it, I will give you uh, 4,000 naira advance, 40 percent. You give me bank guarantee bond, and the balance I put in an account with the bank, and I ask the bank to invest it for me in treasury bills, or keep it for me to generate some profit. And we did this over a period of time until we got to a stage where we asked our finance people to show us how much profit have we made. Yeah. And from that investment activity alone, we made about 10 billion naira as at 2,000 and. Uh, 14. From which we were told you built the, uh, the, the, the governor's the, the, the lodge. money I took, you know, to build the governor's lodge in Abuja, about 380 million naira. And uh, we equally built the magnificent new government house from that same profit. Yep. You know, we felt since we made some modest effort, we should have something to show for that effort. Strategically, we're throwing it back into the system and nobody knows what modest effort. People can learn from this. Yep. And uh, believe me, it's simple and easy to manage resources with the right dedication, commitment, sincerity, and the fear of God. Uh, so, uh, as a follow-up to that, yes, mm -hmm. yes, uh, I recall that uh, when you first came in, there was this um, uh, crisis over the fact that some elders in the state who feel very strongly that uh, you were not uh, you know, sharing money. And the noise was very loud between 2008, 2009, and early part of 2010. But all of a sudden, it has fizzled out. How were you able to manage that transition? You see, when you start something like that, people will not understand you. But as time goes on, people start to appreciate where are, which direction are going. And then I eventually receive a lot of support from those people. Because you know, Katina is a very advanced society. It is a society for a state that has tremendous amount of experience in terms of the quality of people who have served this nation at different strata. General Hassan was long Katina, the first governor of Northern Region was from Katina. Shiro Musa Eredua, second in command chief of staff, Spring Headquarters of Olochi Kubasa Job, was from Katina. General Mahmoud Buhari was head of state, was from Katina. Omar Musa Eredua was president, was from Katina. The first chief justice, indigenous Northern Nigerian chief justice from Osman Katina, just from Lema Mahmoud Bello. The IG Inspector General of Police of Gawan, MD Yusuf, was from Katina. Yeah. IG of uh, Bacha, uh, Ivan Babangida, Ivan Kumasi, is from Katina. Yeah. The first director of SSS in Nigeria, Rafendati, he is late now, is from Katina. 
as a director of national intelligence mm-hmm. agencies, they are all sitting there. <laughs> those, those gentlemen, give, you know, to a lot of extent, you know, gave us inspiration and gave me guidance in a lot number of ways. And uh, it's easy for people to now appreciate and understand what direction we're going. Yeah. We're talking about uh, inspiration and guidance. Uh, the late Mo Musayadu, whom you mentioned a while ago, was your political mentor. Uh, what most people remember about him uh, for all that, was all that time spent in hospital as president? What would you describe as Yadwa's legacy? His legacy in Katsina? In Katsina, in Katsina, in, Katsina, in Nigeria. Katsina is prudence, courage, commitment, dedication, and absolute belief in his creator and in his country. I worked with him as attorney general commissioner for this, so I understand him fairly very well. And I was very close to him. And uh, eventually, you know, I, I, I was encouraged by him to run for the office of governor in Kansas State. And I met his governor of state when he was president. I worked with him very closely and I understand his conceptualization and his perception of what Nigeria should have. Unfortunately, he didn't live long to see to the dreams of a better Nigeria. His legacy is in Katina. Essentially, he has laid the solid foundation upon which we went on to build what we built in Katina. You see, it's always better to inherit a working system than a cash system. So, Aladi Umaru Musa Erdua, our blessed memory, left a working system in Katina upon which we built. Your Excellency, you've just uh, given us a very interesting uh, history about the kind of people who have held important positions who are all from Katsina. Some of them are still with us, some are not. And uh, interestingly, you are probably the only governor, one of the few, that while serving as governor, you have the president of the country from your state, and you have the leader of the opposition also from your state. Yes. And now you are still governor, and the president-elect is from your state. Yes. It must be a very, very delicate social engineering to manage this kind of situation. I mean, how really, truly challenging do you find it? Rubbing shoulders, you know, running into General Muhammad Buhari, the president-elect, his supporters, his family members, and then all those other people on the other hand. How has it been, really? Well, I'll tell you, um, uh, we have maintained a very good relationship with all, or I have maintained a very good relationship with all the leaders from Katana that I mentioned, those alive and those that uh, left us. Essentially, it's not an easy business for any governor to have a sitting president from his state. Because before the president in office hears about an issue about one state in Nigeria, he has had 100 issues about his own state. Yeah. So that becomes a big challenge for whoever is governor in that state. And uh, I have had my own experiences. On the issue of President-elect uh, General Muhammad Buhari, I have a lot of respect for him. I have known him for a pretty long time. And uh, we don't run politics of hate in Katsina. We don't run politics of, uh, we don't run politics of uh, you know, uh, allegations, uh, accusations, and falsehood. No. General Buhari runs his campaigns in Katsina in a neat manner. He doesn't interfere with what we're doing. And we run our campaign without, uh, without any hindrance. So there's mutual understanding and mutual respect for each other, even for those in other parties. Of course, it's not 100% uh, you know, perfect for everyone. There are those who rather go and say all kinds of manner of lies and falsehood and wicked stories. And that's politics. I understand that. But essentially, working in Katina, I have learned a lot. And uh, the president elect too is coming on board now. He's from Katina. So I uh, hope and prayer is that he continue to hold this nation well and do the best he can to serve this country. Um, let's go back to governance and personal state, uh, if you may. You spent a lot of time and efforts and resources inviting investors into Kassila State. Can you tell us how well that did? That, that yeah, did right? I think that's simple to answer because we have had so many in, uh, you know, international organizations coming to invest in Kassila. Mm-hmm. Uh, essentially, I can tell you that if you go to Kassila now, most of the construction going on of new infrastructure, new facilities, I don't even build back as an indigenous. There are people who are coming there to build, to come there to support and work in the economy. And there is a very critical area of investment that I started, and I hope the income administration will pay attention to, the power sector. 
This administration has initiated the process of establishing a 35 megawatt solar.